Again, welcome everyone. This is Mark speaking. I'm glad to have you here on this webinar today. With me, I have Tanya Barbeto. She is our marketing manager in Western Europe. She is assisting me today with uh, the presentation and uh, she is answering some questions that might come up. So, hello, Tanya. Hello, Mark. Hello, everybody. So, I think we can directly go in and get started with uh, what we want to show you today about the new products we want to bring to market um, from Patton. Um, we are quite excited about this, that we've reached this milestone here. So uh, first of all, I want to go through the agenda real quick in order to give you an overview on what we are going to talk about. Um, we have two new products we want to introduce to you. So one of them is the hybrid ESPC and uh, analog ESPC and of course the gateways um, that come along with it. Then uh, we've done a product distinction in order for you to easily understand what the differences are between the ESPCs and the gateways. Then we've done a competitor analysis um, to see where we stand with our products uh, and also for you to highlight the advantages of our products that uh, are there compared to some other products you might find in the market. Then use cases. So uh, what kind of use cases we found or we see where those products can be used for. Some applications we've picked out to give you an idea um, where and how our products can solve problems in a cost-effective manner. To the end of the session, we want to go through um, the highlights you will just learn in the next couple of minutes. And then we've reserved also some time for a Q&A, should there be still some questions around. However, feel free to ask questions during the presentation using the questions tab on the tool we are using here. OK, good. Getting started with the hybrid ESPC. So that's called the SmartNote 5551. Um, this is how the product looks from the front side. So um, it comes in the new and modern plastic enclosure, as you can see here. And looking at it from the rear, that gives you an idea on how many ports that come on that product. So it's actually two versions that are available, the smaller version with two BRI and two FXS ports. As you can see, two Ethernet ports for routing purposes or ESPC functionalities, but also it comes with a USB port that can be used for a 3G, 4G cellular modem as a backup link. More details on that I'll tell you later. The bigger product that comes with 4BRI and 4FXS, um, it's also bigger in size. As you can see, uh, it's coming in a metal enclosure, but um, from the Ethernet port and USB port perspective, it's the same as for the small one. Um, just to give you a side note here, the gateway only model is called 4151. That's, of course, also available should you just need a gateway for um, such a case with this kind of port combinations. Mark, good. Um... I mean, uh, some of our competitors already have a 2BRI, 2FXS hybrid unit. So can you maybe highlight what's the special thing about this product? Um, yeah, sure. The special thing about this product is it can act as a gateway. Pretty simple. You'll find uh, other products on the market that will probably do the same. However, uh, the nice thing here is that it's a full-blown ESPC that's there to uh, be used in an all IP scenario, in an all IP environment. So that means you wouldn't have to replace that unit once your customer has been um, uh, migrated to all IP with its equipment. So it still would be there and play an important role um, in an all IP environment, um, being used as a service demarcation point, security element, protecting the LAN from uh, fraud attacks that might come from the van side, and, and much more features. QoS, that might be another thing in such a case. So that makes it really nice and unique. So ESPC functionalities in an ESPC, which is ready for the future. 
Okay, so no need to buy then an additional unit when you migrate to this new all IP trend. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Now, just switching to the next one here. So that's the pure analog product, the pure analog ESPC we have done. So this one comes with two, four, or eight FXS ports. It's, as I said, also for the previous product, it's a full-blown ESPC, which is ready for an all IP environment, but it comes with analog ports on it that will solve uh, many problems. For instance, if there are phones um, or generally speaking equipment that might not be possible to be replaced by an all IP ready equipment. So this unit will do that job and integrate such legacy equipment into an all IP world, um, into the ESPC, which means that you wouldn't need two devices and just one, this one here. So can we say this analog device will replace somehow uh, the known 4110s or 4520s? Um, well, they will. However, it's not a one-to-one -one replacement. As with this product, we have much more features, much more performance. For instance, we support FXS long reach. That means for each line of that eight ports, you can go up to a cable length of up to 10 kilometers, and it would still power up to three phones connected to a single line, which is uh, quite quite a distance and a nice functionality. Actually, you wouldn't probably find in any comparable competitor devices. Also, um, on the new units, we support all three kinds of message rating indication. So. Um, in addition, we now also support the neon bulb lamp um, that can be turned on, on on the phones, which wasn't there before, and many, many more things. Another um, important thing here, the dual software image we support. So usually you would find this on very expensive core uh, equipment devices, which would have this feature. We've, we've done it as well for CPE that resides as the, at the customer premise, which is a nice functionality, which saves um, uh, a lot of time and money and gets uh, rid of, of any pain that may occur during um, a software update. So with that, it's easily possible to roll back to the previous software image that was running um, previously. So there is no need to do another download, um, especially in a case where there are hundreds or even thousands of units installed and the software image has to be done. This feature really makes the difference. Zero touch provisioning, I think you all know that. That's, um, that's there, that's standard. So through HTTPS, the units can be easily deployed. Um, kind of new here is the packet smart functionality, which provides network assessment and monitoring. That is a nice tool that will help you to serve your customers with a good um, experience um, of voice quality and network stability. And just going to the top of the table here, just to call out the differences between ESPC and gateways. So that's all lined up nicely in here. Competitor analysis, as I said, so we've tried to line up um, uh, the competitor's product with, with ours. And as you can see, uh, there's a lot of functionalities coming with, with our products at the really um, competitive price. If you look at the features we support, for instance, G722 HD codec functionality, which becomes more and more important in an all IP environment, which is supported by our device. Um, another thing in terms of all IP, back-to-back -back user agent, um, SIP service demarcation, let's say, uh, which is available. Um, the long reach, I've talked about the dual image you usually wouldn't find. So these features makes it really unique, um, our product, and as you can see, at a very competitive price. The same thing for the ESPC with analog ports. So the long reach functionality, and uh, of course the, uh, uh, the MWI functionalities, whether it's FSK line reversal or the neon bulb functionality, that's all there. And even here on an analog ESPC, we support a G722 codec for uh, HD um, uh, voice, uh, which is required or needed if you're talking about an all IP scenario or environment. 
Now let's go into the applications to give you an idea um, how our products can be used. I want to start with a long reach scenario using the uh, 4141 8FXS unit that could be used for um, school campuses or fun parks or in a zoo. I mean, everywhere where there's long distances for phone lines and where um, public phones sort of would have to be connected to um, the network. So that could also be on an enterprise, on a big enterprise production plant. To illustrate how in reality that could look like here, so we have, uh, as an example, two smart node units here that would drive the line um, going to the um, analog phones that are placed all over of this campus area here and really from the smart node to the phone that's um, uh, far away there that could be up to 10 kilometers. So instead of buying, I don't know, five analog gateways, you just need to have two now. So you're saving a lot of money, right? Right. For just to addressing the phones, as you can see here, you would you'd be fine in going with two. But also, I think it's important to say here, um, it's it, it eliminates the need of having an ATA um, placed at each phone, uh, which is displayed here, uh, which would cause another issue there that you're restricted in the length of the Ethernet cable that can just go up to 100 meter. And also you would need to have power at each phone there. So all these things you can eliminate with a smart note here, with the new smart note that would drive um, the line power to power up the phone and to do phone calls for a length up to 10 kilometers. Another long reach scenario um, could be um, emergency phones installed in a, in a tunnel. So taking as an example, a tunnel of a length of 16 kilometers. So there you would just need two gateways being installed at, at one end each um, instead of six gateways, considering the line length those smart nodes would drive. A reference story I would like to highlight here with one of our uh, customers, um, they have done um, company called IPA. Um, they have equipped um, tunnels in Brussels in Belgium where they've used smart node analog devices. So they were uh, they're driving uh, or powering 700 emergency phones that are located in all the different tunnels. So the requirement there has been um, to provide by the operator to provide a reliable and fast response to emergency calls that includes video geolocation but of course also phone calls and for the phone calls part smart note devices were installed and have been used so also here i mean why did they choose the smart note right because as you said the patent products are well known for stability and reliability and for such emergency cases this is really important Absolutely, absolutely. I think you don't want to uh, mess with uh, any any product that breaks after a certain time, uh, after a certain period of time. So I think it's key here for the reliability and the quality um, to provide a fast response to any emergency that may happen. Yeah, and maybe here I have a question from Gibran. Uh, he's asking analog phone range will 10 kilometers after each gateway. Um, I mean, it can it, from from the gateway to the far end of a line, um, it can be 10 kilometers. So you could imagine like having a, a star topology where in each direction you could go up to 10 kilometers. So where, the, uh, for instance, it could be a distance of 20 kilometers if the gateway would be placed in the middle. So 10 kilometers in, in each direction. Um, I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Now, switching to the next use case, I would like to show you now. Um, all of you know how a typical or uh, yeah, how the ISDN deployment is being done up to now. So there's an NTAB um, that's driven through the U interface coming from the carrier's network side um, that has two BRI port, two FXS port. Now with um, the change happening right now to all IP, uh, a, also a change in the architecture is required in the technology. So now with the new device we come up 
here now is that the service provider can remain in the deployment model. So that means that still an NT device sort of will go to the customer premise. That will do the conversion from all IP to um, legacy equipment, so with uh, BRI and FXS ports. But in addition, it also provides security functionalities, QoS, and um, a, a lot of other functionalities that come along with that product. So with that, it's really made easy for your clients. They don't have to worry about the change happening right now to all IP. So you can go ahead and change the network to all IP, place a smart note there, that will do the conversion back to TDM to keep your customers happy. And with the additional feature that come along with that product, it's really safe, secure, stable, and reliable. Again, the 4151 gateway, that's the hybrid version with 2BRI, 2FXS. Um, you could get it with four simultaneous calls or with eight simultaneous calls, as indicated here. ESBC, so we didn't talk about the, an ESBC application yet. Um, I think all of you know how a typical ESBC application would look like, where the um, enterprise session board controller is doing the service demarcation between the van and the LAN side. It's um, there to uh, make sure that the LAN um, side, IPPBX and the phones is properly protected from any fraud strikes that might um, come or appear from, from the van side. Uh, QoS management, the ESPC stands for, or for any SIP normalization in terms of different SIP flavors you would see uh, being used by different equipment. So now, um, with the ESPC um, acting as this, we've added analog ports and BRI ports to that ESPC, which allows um, for your customers to connect their legacy equipment, for instance, but also special kind of equipment that might not be possible to be um, replaced by a device that has Ethernet ports and is all IP capable. So that could be a stamping machine or metering machines um, or the good old fax devices. Um, that still um, exists and still will be there for the next couple of years, or as I said, any legacy ISDN phones or even an ISDN PBX. So with this product, you would save time and money in, uh, for the deployment, uh, but also uh, money in terms of investments for a CPE. So you wouldn't need two devices, but just one. So instead of an ESPC buying it separately uh, from a VoIP gateway, all the functionalities you need is in this one device. Failover 3G, 4G, um, in order for you to provide a high availability of services to your customer, we've developed and uh, included a failover mechanism, failover functionalities into all our devices that allows you to do a failover once a link goes down to an alternative link. So that alternative link could be um, a cellular modem that's connected through the USB port, or it could be the second Ethernet port, which really allows um, to provide a um, high availability of phone services. Alternatively, of course, you could also have TDM interfaces on that product, which would do a failover to the PSDN if um, there is still a TDM line coming from the PSDN to the customer side. There are various mechanisms uh, in order to detect uh, a dead link um, or a PBX that might be down. So that can be done using SIP options paying or through SIP registrations or through regular ICMP ping in order to detect uh, very fast if their link is down or if a PBX is dead. And you could even do a failover to, um, of course, an alternative link, but also to an alternative uh, SIP account or to an alternative IP PBX, as illustrated here on the right hand side. So, is this something unique for Patton or is it? It's very unique in terms of all the functionalities we've highlighted before that come along with that product. And on top, you have the failover functionality. So that's really something which makes it unique. Um, you probably wouldn't find um, out in the market so that such a small device can provide um, that many functions and also comes with a high performance um, on, on uh, packet routing. So that's really makes, makes it unique. 
um, and you can do a lot of things in order to provide, again, high quality, high availability services to your customers. Okay. Good. Packet Smart, a few words about what this does. Packet Smart, that's uh, a powerful tool uh, which is developed by, by Broadsoft. As you know, Patton and Broadsoft, we are in a, a long term partnership. And uh, what we have done now with that uh, Packet Smart tool is we've implemented the Packet Smart tool into our SmartNote products, which means that this would allow you using SmartNote products also using packet smart in this case so you would need a separate probe to do network assessment call monitoring um, quality assessment and so on so to give you an example of how that could, could look like in an ESPC application so we have the IPPBX that talks to the ESPC and then goes into the carrier network so whether it's a hosted service provider or um, a tier one provider um, that that doesn't matter in this case. And Packet Smart, what, what it will do, it will monitor all the traffic that goes through the device, whether it's voice or data. It's doing both, and it analyzes that traffic, reports it to the cloud, as you can see on the right hand side, and from there, um, um, reporting and uh, proactive alerting can be done based on triggers you set, uh, based on the metrics you want to use, which will allow you to notify the customer. Um, uh, early or even in advance before they dis discover a problem to tell them um, either to upgrade to a more powerful access link in order to um, sustain the number of calls they are doing. So that feature or that tool really allows you to see what's happening on the customer premise and to detect uh, quality problems or any kind of connectivity problems early enough so that their the downtime is is low, um, your service cost is low um, with that tool. The same thing works for VoIP gateway applications. So it's in any new patent device, the packet smart functionality can be turned on. Now I think we are coming to an end of this presentation, but again I would like to highlight. Um, the main things on, on the product we have. So there's many applications. I just um, showed you a couple of those. There's uh, many, many more. And all of these, they can be, can be done with just one device. Long reach FXS, that's unique. Dual image as well. There are loads of security features coming with uh, any new patent product. Failover service stability and re reliability. Um, uh, key enough, I, I would think. And uh, one important thing here is they're all ready for all IP. So no need to replace the equipment in one or two years time when um, uh, your network from the carrier side is changing. Easy to set up. The web wizards, you probably all know, um, there is more and more wizards being added to the portal we have online. So you might want to have a look there and see what new wizards we have, which really makes it easy and fast to do deployments using patent products. And patent stands for, I think you know, reliability, quality, sustainability. So uh, we've uh, achieved interoperability with uh, a, a whole lot of, of soft switch and IPPBXs um, that were certified and are running fine with our products. Um, a lot of scenarios, I've mentioned that before, and still we're producing in-house in the uh, headquarter in the USA, in, in Gatorsburg, Maryland. Our products are Swiss engineered, so we have uh, really many years of um, know-how and experience in telephony, whether it is analog or ISDN, but also on IP level. Um, so and also RMA rate is very low, so we've just checked that it's below half a percent actually. Good. Just want to give you a quick outlook um, on what's coming next. So we are preparing for uh, again new products towards the end of this year, new products that come with a combined WAN interface supporting ADSL and VDSL. And also we are about to um, uh, to launch and to come up with tier 69 management for carrier deployments, big carrier deployments um, supported on our products. And for that, there's going to be uh, webinars 
um, in uh, Q4 of this year. So just to give you an outlook there, uh, Packet Smart is one thing uh, we will introduce, but also all the new features we will come up with in the meantime. Okay, should there be any questions, uh, you know how to reach us. Um, we are uh, available through email, through telephone calls, but I think now we want to take the time quick and see if there were some questions during the presentation. So Tanya, tell me, Yes. is everything clear or? Well, more or less <laughs> clear. I have a question from Ali asking, any possibility to have ex Extension port in that means to say DSL interface. Extension port, could, could you say that again? Yeah, expansion port. Expansion port. So how we are doing the VDSL, it's going to be in a, in a similar manner as we've done it before. So there is products available with the integrated VDSL, ADSL interface or products without. So it means there is uh, there is no field upgrade possible for that. So you'd have to either order it with or without. Okay. Then we have another question from Gisbert. Is Packet Smart a fair firmware feature, meaning it also work in current models after upgrade? And is it license free? That's actually a good question. So all these details you will certainly learn during the um, uh, the webinar. But to answer your question right away, um, the Packet Smart functionality is part of our latest software releases, so it's included there. However, it requires a software license to turn on that feature, which comes along with a uh, one-time one -time fee for that license. Okay, and Gisbert is also asking if Patton would also sell USB backup mo modems. USB backup modems, good question as well. So we've certified um, a handful of those and we are about to certify more. Um, as for now, we are not reselling those, but that's something we could imagine doing in the future. So should you have your um, USB modem of choice, so please contact us and we will see that we could support that in order to um, uh, make it possible for you to serve your customer needs with the modem of choice. Perfect. And then Jeremy is asking, uh, what about FXO products? Are any Trinity versions coming up? FXO, that's still on, on our roadmap. So uh, we see the trend towards all IP where FXO is being required um, less and less. But still, uh, Jeremy, I'd be interested to um, learn more about your application, your needs, um, which could uh, maybe raise the priority of the FXO on our roadmap correspondingly. And Jaisal is asking, does it support MGCP? MGCP, um, unfortunately not. So uh, we support um, uh, SIP. Uh, I think SIP, that's the dominator in, in all IP environments. Um, so we don't see MGCP or A323 being used uh, a lot, but still it really depends on um, the opportunities and I would also be glad to learn more from you about your application, your needs um, there um, to see if MGCP would be an interesting um, a protocol for us to be supported as well. Again, I mean, remembering um, 10 years back almost, we've had MGCP on some products, but really the market was um, uh, switching uh, from MGCP, from A323 to SIP, and that's um, the, the, the protocol which is being used the most. Okay, uh, should we go, should move forward with another question? Yeah, maybe we can uh, do one or two, okay. uh, one Let's or two more, two. and then we can, uh, we will certainly get back to all of you with your questions um, through email or through phone calls after this session. So I think one or okay. two more questions should be fine. Um, let's answer from Mohamed. What about G.SHDSL ATM EFM auto detection? Um, that's a good point. So um, G.S uh, still uh, we see that this is being used. So lately we've um, uh, developed an interface that supports both ATM and EFM. So where there is no need to buy um, either this or the other product. So both is in there in terms of auto detection. So that's something uh, we're about to um, to look at, or we, we looked at already. 
Um, so there, that's that's a feature that might come in the future. So um, we will give you more details in a in a personal conversation how it looks like from a roadmap perspective, what auto detection is concerned. But still today, um, already today, it can be um, configured. So either or, and uh, that's that's already available, right? Okay, and maybe uh, last question: Is it planned to make interoperability tests with major PAVX manufacturers like Cisco, Avaya, or Unify? Um, right. So we've done all that. Yeah. Um, so that's that's all available. And uh, I think the the important point there is that even though we've done it, it uh, it's a matter of the um, uh, the interface facing the carriers network um, so we we would we would know how to configure the smart nodes to uh, perfectly work with with avaya or swix or 3cx or whatever um, however there is also um, a, another side of the communication between the smart node and the core side um, and spc or the application server of the carrier which requires in every case different settings so uh, generally speaking um, yes, that's available, but usually it requires specific settings for the entire application to work perfectly. Perfect. Maybe we can, um, we had a question from Max asking if he can already order our products. Sure. So the products, they are on the web page. So uh, we took the effort there, making sure that's all available, um, that uh, you guys can go ahead and place orders. We are glad to receive um your your early orders there um so just let us know if you're missing anything um, but we're glad to see your order coming in perfect i mean there are some questions which were not answered yet but we will send you an email during the day uh responding to all your questions absolutely good so i would like to thank you again for uh, taking the time listening to us. And um, I'm looking forward to see you again sometime soon, um, uh, either personally or in one of the upcoming webinars. So you'll get invitations um, in the next coming weeks for those sessions. Um, so thanks again for joining and wishing you all a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, thank you.